So, I love goofy wrestling, hence why I'm wearing an Indiana Jones hat and wearing a wig. So I just think having fun and not taking yourself too seriously is very important in this mad thing we call life. This is the same when it comes to sports entertainment though, because as Cindy Lauper once told me, we all just want to have fun. So of course I enjoy the more serious stuff, but as long as I walk away from my television set going, oh man, I had such a good time, I think everybody should just be happy. They also have real problems. The whole point of wrestling is to distract me, but I also like the other side of the fence, which is kind of what WWE has been doing with the bloodline. But all of a sudden, when it comes to all elite wrestling, well, maybe, maybe, they've just found their own version. Why? Huh, softer when you've got hair. Here's why. So, a few tidbits, yes. I do totally believe that the Bloodline stuff is one of the best stories that WWE has ever told. I don't think this is recency bias. I think sometimes you can just believe in it and go from there. But also, it didn't take off and fly into the stratosphere until we introduced Sami Zayn to it. Now, the real warm and fuzziness from the narrative did come in the fact that, dun, 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 we all gave a flub and we all cared about Mr. Zayn. He just has this sympathetic quality where you do want him to do well. So when the big bad Roman Reigns started to manipulate him, it was like, this guy using his good looks and his beard and his lovely hair to try and get one over on this man. I don't think that's cool. The extra nugget on top though was how Sammy would act when he was around his buddies. We all remember that smack -a down segment when all of a sudden he was talking about not being Usy enough. Not only did it make us laugh, we had Roman Reigns laughing, you had Jimmy Uso laughing, you had Jay Uso laughing. So I was in the corner just going, please, don't crack a smile. I'll get in so much trouble, I'm meant to be a character. All of a sudden then, him and Roman had this very strange, almost like uncle-nephew relationship. Don't forget all the bizarre hand gestures and shakes that he used to do with Jimbo. While him and Jay couldn't get on the same page to begin with, that's where the emotional heart was when they did come together. Tear in your seeing device. And all of this just made you love him more, so don't tell me funny doesn't make money. That's what some wrestlers like to say. Well, I think sometimes humor will make your bank balance bigger. Man, that didn't work at all. When we do flip over to AEW, just for the sake of this video, everybody calm down. I actually think we have the makings that it could happen again. And no, I'm not saying this is a copy which people on Twitter or X love to jump on. Are you kidding me? Anybody involved in sports entertainment is just recycling all the ideas from yesteryear. But we put MJF and Adam Cole together, I think just to buy us some time before they got to their world title match. And all of a sudden it was like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, write this down, damn it. So we document it for the future. They've totally got something. And even though they had just gone to a time limit draw and they hated each other, they accepted their fate, mostly because they both hate Tony Schiavone, and because they were like, well, it would be cool to be an AEW World Tag Team Champion, but also, I can screw this guy over eventually. I mean, they both admitted that to the other one, which also helped this relationship grow. They also decided in between matches they were just gonna be as ludicrous as possible, which is why they did all that dumb but amazing stuff in the gym, and the same when they went to that restaurant. Plus. They even got a double clothesline over. So again, don't you tell me that we're not going back in time to borrow things from say the 1980s and there is nothing wrong with this. If you get a crowd to go, oh, I'm having a good time. Well, one, nobody should ever make that noise, but two, you've done your job. I mean, we did that again when Maxo was trying to slam Big Bill. Do you remember how Friedman reacted when all of a sudden he realized that Adam Cole had gone out of his way to match their themes together? I shouldn't be getting excited about that. You shouldn't be getting excited about that. But again, it comes down to these personas. He seems so overjoyed. It was like, ah, oh, shucks, what a fella. We even got quite deep down and sad with this too when the pair were playing video games. Because MGF was like, oh, I've never played a game with somebody else before. Now I understand why it's fun. And given the fact that I am talking to you, they are still together. Well, now we can kind of put that into wrestling Nor Poor Maxwell just never had any real buddies to play with, kills me. Kills me right in my heart. So all of a sudden, the pair found warmth in the audience, which goes back to all the Sami Zayn stuff. When you do have this feeling, even if it is somebody you don't know on the screen, you just want them to do well. I mean, it's a crazy relationship to have with an absolute stranger. It's happening on WWE, it's happening on AEW, and really, it's happening across television and movies. That's why we go. There was proper nuance here too with these little looks that Cole would give MJF. And then of course, we got to that episode of Collision when they were defeated by FTR. And of course, instead of hitting Adam Cole in the head with the World Championship, they just did this big old embrace. I'm still not over that. I woke up this morning and just screamed 
into the ether. None of that is true. I'm not even going to pretend I didn't do it. This is when we do start doing the comparisons. Because if you don't know, Sami Zayn in the bloodline was meant to be a three-week thing. So you start to see how this does all tie in. We were just going to have some fun and games for less than a month. And then he could move on. We felt the crowd and we felt what people were doing and we continued it, which is what I think AEW is doing now with M. Jeff and Adam Cole. And to that I say, damn right, it's the correct choice. Also, sometimes you just have to look at the most obvious things. Statistics. When they're on TV, the numbers go up. I do believe they have the best selling shirt of the year, even though they've only been together for a month. And also, social media is sending out positive vibes. Do you know how hard that is to do on social media? Everybody on there is just so upset. I mean, we've even put in place other things that you could pull off because Maxwell said to Adam, listen, you're such a good friend of mine. If you do want to have a world title shot, we can just do it, which means at Wembley or the Chicago show, if you want to do like a buddy, buddy best match where two friends just have a fight, you can. What did I say at the start of this video? I love goofy wrestling. I ain't gonna be mad at it. I would say the only mistake we've made so far is not making the AEW Tag Team Champions because sometimes you just need to feel that energy and pull the trigger. But then in the aftermath, we did have that hug, which means we can go off in a different direction. So even then, all of this still has the momentum. And for the people that do disagree with this, they're like saying, no, this is not what MJF's character would do. Well, let's say we do keep it nice and simple and Maxwell turns on Adam. Sure, it's gonna make you go, I can't believe it. But do you know what will make you do it twice as loud? If we hold it off for as long as possible. I mean, the best stories always have a payoff down the line. You do it too soon, no one cares. I am sorry to keep coming back to this, but it's just so much evidence there. It's exactly what we did with Sami Zayn. By the time we got to the Royal Rumble and he got that chair and he gave the head of the table a big thwack, they had been going at it for eight months. And even at the Elimination Chamber where they did fight off, there were some voices going, it's too soon, we should have held this off to WrestleMania because they were invested and they were happy to ride the wave. There was also an amazing fallout to this because look at SmackDown right here, right now. Ratings are still through the roof. And don't tell me that Sami wasn't a part of that because he absolutely was. It allowed people, here comes that word again, to blur, to invest. And sure, we don't know if the AEW version is going to be as successful, but right now we're certainly putting the building blocks in place. And don't forget how this all started as well with two people talking about a flipping double clothesline. I mean, these two mother hubbards got that over. So if all of a sudden you start giving them stuff that has more depth, well, this could actually shoot through the roof and could be the kick in the shin that maybe AEW needs right now. Also, as a quick aside, do you know how much heat you would have got if you had suggested something like this on Reddit? They would have killed you. So with extra time to play around with, you could even get this Sami Zayn effect, not for Adam Cole, but for MJF. Because somehow, he has become the ultimate babyface heel. Again, we go back to that Collision FTR match. He quite clearly wanted to punch Dax Harwood in the balls, and he spent the whole match trying to do so. And even though that's a dastardly tactic, everybody in the building, and me here at home was like, yeah. You get those testicles. The man doesn't make any sense. That's why he's a generational talent. You could also pull a fast one and whip it out of your pocket too, which sounded terrible. I did not mean it to sound that way. But why can't we get to the point where you think Maxwell is going to turn on Adam, but you do it the other way around? It's not like Cole isn't a wonderful heel. In fact, all of his best runs in wrestling so far have been as a bad guy. And of course, it doesn't even matter if we do just decide that MGF should go back to the dark side, because again, he's so good at playing that role. I just want the moment, like I knew Sammy was going to do this to Roman eventually, but when I did get it, I started doing the dance of joy. And with this, well, I already feel just as invested. So let's just do it again. Wrestling has given us the template. Let us learn from its magic. So quite clearly, All Elite Wrestling is looking for something right now to shift things back into gear. I think this is it. Because they didn't even win the Tag Team Champions, which sometimes can be the nail of death, but it didn't. It just made everybody want to support them even more. Very excited about this. We have stumbled across gold. And the idea I did have before, obviously, it's now changed a little bit, is because we do have these two big back-to-back pay-per-views, you could have actually done the tag team match at All In, and then you could have got to All Out, and you could have had the singles match, because at All In, Adam Cole or MGF had turned on the other one. Now, we're not going to do that now, so it makes me a sad panda, but I have faith in Tony Khan. I mean, he does know what he's doing. All I really do want is more of these backstage vignettes and just making me feel all warm and fuzzy in my tum-tum. And also, I've just realized, if we do decide to end this at All In, excuse me, All Out, it's very, very confusing, that will be in Chicago. And who has been going around saying, I'm the real world champion? It's CM Punk. 
I think quite ironically, our worlds are about to collide. But I really can't see the arguments for the contrary at the moment because it opens so many doors. I know people like to go, but that means we won't have a world title match for ages. Who the flub cares about that? As long as they keep talking about the world championship, which they've been doing every single day, you still know it's important. And that's the key here, making sure the prestige stays with the belt. So far, so good. I'm gonna put it down now. I mean, the crowd will tell you when they do wanna see something like that. And think of all the other times that we have capitalized on out of nowhere success. For example, Stone Cold Steve Austin was never meant to be the top guy, but that worked out okay. And more recently, Daniel Bryan in WWE. If you don't know that story, there is 82,000 million videos out there about it. You could find out, but trust me, they actively fought against it and he won out all the same. I mean, LA Knight is one we could talk about that's happening right here, right now, and I'm actually confident about that one too. So let's jump on this bandwagon and ride it to the station. I mean, even if we look back at hindsight and go, oh man, we ran it a little bit long, we did make a mistake, I don't care. I would rather sometimes you sank rather than swim than not take the risk. That's what life is all about. Also, wrestling lasts 52 weeks a year. So sometimes you're not ready to call an audible or kind of veer off in a different direction when you do hear the crowd, then what the hell are we doing here anyway? I mean, as always, if you burst in here right now and put a gun to my head and said, whoa, when do you think we will get the split? I couldn't actually tell you, but I also think there's something that too, it keeps you on your tootsie toes, it keeps you watching and it keeps you invested. So I think this is awesome. I think this is brilliant and it just ties into how good 2023 has been. Not only do we get top rated matches all the time, not only are the actual plans that creative people are writing pretty damn good, but now we're getting the out of nowhere stuff too. I think we should enjoy this 12 month period. I mean, it will go on for a little while, but we are definitely back at the boom, which is Adam Cole's finisher. Thank goodness for that. Now, of course, I need you to go in the comments below and tell me how wrong I am, because amazingly, I'm always wrong, but it's good to hear your opinions. And you can click this lovely video on the screen it will be good. Also like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Head over to whatculture.com where we will keep you up to date with all the latest news. And we're on social media, Simon316 and WhatCulture WWE. But more importantly, enjoy professional wrestling. Throw your hats off into the distance for no reason whatsoever. It's now definitely broken that glass. I <laughs> didn't mean to do that. I think I'll keep the wig on for the rest of the day, even though it is making me sweat. Too much information. See you soon.